Have you ever been grounded for something ridiculous? Well, chances are the rule you broke was nothing compared to the strict rules some parents around the world have. From having to pay parents real money to watch Saturday morning cartoons, to getting grounded over buying too much furniture for your sims, to having to wear diapers at sleepovers. These are some of the weirdest rules from strict parents around the world. Before we get into the absolutely crazy stories told by people who lived under the roof of strict parents, let's talk about some of the weird general family rules that you probably didn't even know existed in other countries. These aren't just specific to a certain family, but are followed by many households in the country. The craziest thing is that even a rule you might find absolutely wild might be common to a lot of different people. In Vietnam, parents are incredibly strict about a rule related to potty training. In this country, the rule is that you are potty trained by 9 months old or get scolded by your parents. To put this in perspective, the average child in the United States begins potty training between 18 months and 24 months. Having Vietnamese parents might mean the child will start having strict rules before they even reach age 1. A rule for a child to learn proper bathroom etiquette at 9 months old might seem extreme, but it works for Vietnamese parents. The way they do this is by whistling. Since a 9-month-old can't be reasoned with, and most words don't have meaning yet, this seems to be the best way to enforce the potty training rule. Parents begin by observing when their baby starts to urinate or show signs of needing to go pee. They then make a whistling sound that the baby associates with going to the bathroom. As time progresses, the baby can be placed on a small toilet, and when they hear the whistle, they know it's time to go to the bathroom. The process happens only a few months into the baby's life, but by 9 months old, almost all Vietnamese children are potty trained, which is super young compared to the rest of the world. So, perhaps having strict rules about going to the bathroom at such a young age is one the rest of the world should adopt. Sticking with rules for younger children, there is one rule that the Kisi people of Kenya follow that might seem hard to us. Kisi moms have strict no cooing or crying policies for their babies. The mothers tend to take their babies everywhere, but if at any point the child starts to make an unwanted noise, there are strict rules enforced. The Kisi mothers immediately avert their eyes and refuse to look at the baby until the sounds stop. This might seem a little mean to parents in other parts of the world, but eye contact is a sign of power in their culture. By avoiding eye contact, the mother is showing the baby that they do not have power to get what they want by making noise. This rule is strictly enforced and leads to Kisi kids being less needy and more self-reliant as they get older. The next strict rule parents implement on certain Polynesian islands might end up giving you anxiety. The parents on these islands are busy making sure their kids have enough food to eat and a roof over their heads, so they need to work. This has caused the creation of a system based around children taking care of children. There's a sort of childhood hierarchy in these cultures that allow the rules of the parents to be passed down through the ranks of their children. It works something like this. The parents take care of the babies, but once they're old enough to walk, the rule is that they need to start learning skills to help them care for the next baby to come. The initial set of skills a preschool-aged child must learn is to calm down toddlers. The older kids watch the younger ones, which teaches self-reliance and responsibility as a child progresses through each age group. These dynamics are strictly enforced not by overbearing parents but by simply stepping back and letting the children work out the best ways to support one another. So although the children watching children rule in some Polynesian communities may seem odd to us, it is strictly enforced, or the whole system would fall apart. Luckily, the parents have help maintaining the status quo from a constant supply of younger kids growing older and new babies being born into the community. And although some people would see this form of childhood upbringing as neglectful, it's been a rule that older kids must take care of younger children for generations in Polynesia. And so far, it's worked out just fine. Some parents have a strict time that their kids must go to bed, but Spanish parents are strict about bedtime in a different way. This flip-flop is so crazy you'll wonder what you missed by going to bed so early as a child. In Spanish families, many social events and family gatherings happen well into the night. This means that one rule for Spanish kids is that they need to be able to stay up late, not go to bed early. In some families outside of Spain, it is not unheard of that kids have a bedtime around 7 p.m. Or if they're really lucky, they can stay up till 8. But in Spain, this is just when things get started. The social connection between family and friends is so important to the culture that the kids need to be a part of it. This means there is a strict no-going-to-bed rule before the party begins, and since there always seems to be a gathering of some sort, children's bedtimes are pushed until much later in the evening for many Spanish families. A more common time for a child to go to bed in Spain would be closer to 10 p.m., and that is on the early side. Parents are firm in their beliefs that children should have a later bedtime to ensure that they can make it through most family gatherings. A 10 o'clock bedtime for a young child may seem wild to many parents from other parts of the world, but it's just a fact of life in Spanish households. You might have been told you weren't allowed to leave the table unless you ate all your vegetables. 
This might have seemed harsh at the time, but there are parents in one country in particular that takes this rule to a whole new level. Food plays a big role in French culture. It's important not only to the French identity but to the rules in a family household as well. French parents provide their children with strict rules around when they can eat and what they can eat. For example, there are set meal times in France, which means that parents do not let their kids snack throughout the day. They either eat with everyone else or they don't eat at all. Then comes the expectations around what a child should eat. Basically, if it's good enough for adult, it's good enough for children. The rule is that a child will eat what everyone else is eating regardless of if they think they like it or not. The thought behind this rule is that if a kid tries enough things enough times, it'll eventually grow on them. This includes foods like escargot or snails, cristiguinouille or frog's legs, and every type of stinky cheese you can imagine. French parents require their children to eat these types of foods so they can become cultured. It's not up for discussion in French households. You eat what's put in front of you at mealtime or you go hungry, and this particular rule is likely not going to change anytime soon. As you can imagine, Russian parents can be pretty strict, but there is one rule that children must learn early on or the consequences could be dire. It is considered rude to turn your back on someone in Russia. This means that from a younger age, Russian parents have a rule against turning your back on them or anyone else for that matter. It's much more polite to squeeze past someone facing them than by turning your back to them. This might seem weird if you've ever tried to fit into a crowded train car or slip past someone in a movie theater. It would seem odd to many people if you did these things while facing the other person as your nose would practically touch. However, in a Russian house, parents make sure that children follow the no turning your back on anyone rule from an early age. It's strictly enforced to ensure that when the child leaves the house, they don't offend anyone by showing them their backside. Parents in this next country have strict rules about which hand their children eat with, and the reason why is a little gross. In many households in India, it's a rule that food should never be eaten with the left hand. It does not matter if the child is right-handed or left-handed. The rule is you only eat with your right hand. Parents in India put this rule in place and strictly enforce it as soon as their children can understand the directions, and India is not the only region to have this rule. Parents in Middle Eastern countries and parts of Africa teach their children to eat food with their right hand from a young age as well. But what is the reason for this? Why do parents in these countries need to be so strict about the hand children use to eat? In some cultures, the left hand is thought of as dirty. The belief is connected to one simple fact. Oftentimes, the left hand is the one used to wipe after going to the bathroom. This rule most likely has its origins in the past when sanitation and good hygiene were not as prevalent around the world. But the rule has persisted and parents still make sure to enforce it in their households even though hygienic products are much more common than they used to be. In some Asian countries, there's a rule that everyone must follow before stepping foot into a home. Parents strictly implement the following rule to the point that if a child doesn't follow it, they are not allowed into the house. In many parts of East Asia, it's required that you take your shoes off before entering someone's home. This means that parents are very strict about this rule with their own kids as they don't want to be embarrassed when visiting someone else's house. It would be seen as disrespectful and disgraceful if their kid walked in with their shoes on their feet. The reason for this is slightly different between countries, but it has its groundings in spiritual and cultural beliefs. Therefore, making sure that children learn to remove footwear before entering a house is incredibly important in many Asian households. Another reason for this rule could be that kids who play outside all day could track in whatever was on the bottom of their shoes. This would make it difficult to maintain the cleanliness of the house. In some cases, parents will even stand in the doorway to ensure that no shoes allowed rule is followed by their children and their friends. Now we're going to move away from the more generalized rules and get into the crazy specifics. Every family is different, and though there are some overarching rules that most parents follow according to their culture, there are some genuinely unique and weird rules that parents have implemented for their children. If you haven't found any of the rules weird thus far, the next one will definitely get you. Many children enjoy having sleepovers. Sometimes they get into trouble or stay up all night, but that isn't a problem for most parents. However, when a strict parent with an odd rule is in charge of several kids, things can get a little weird. One person recounted his childhood in an online discussion. They remember sleeping over at a friend's house and having to follow a rule that was pretty out there. Their friend was a bedwetter and had to wear diapers until he overcame the problem. This was fine and the friends were understanding of the problem during sleepovers. However, when the friend group went to that kid's house who wet the bed, his parents had a strict rule that made them all a little uncomfortable. All of the kids at the sleepover needed to wear diapers to bed. This was regardless of if they wet the bed or not. This was probably done by the parents to make sure their own kid was comfortable, but it didn't seem absolutely necessary as at other sleepovers he was the only one wearing a diaper and no one seemed to care. The parents created an ultimatum. Either everyone at the sleepover wears a diaper or everyone gets sent home. 
This definitely was one rule that was a little bit strange. Video games, television shows, and movies are now hugely popular with kids as technology has become cheaper and more accessible around the world. However, this move toward digital entertainment has caused parents to come up with some pretty weird rules. In some households, there is controversy over particular aspects of pop culture. However, could any parents really be against Pokemon? The answer is yes, but not for the reasons you might think. Many people have recounted not being allowed to play with Pokemon cards or even watch the TV show growing up. This was often due to household rules around too much screen time or spending money on things that were silly. Although if you were one of the lucky kids who got a holographic Charizard and kept it, that Pokemon card could be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars right now, so joke's on you, mom and dad. But not everyone was so lucky. Some parents had and still have strict rules around no Pokemon in their house for a more bizarre reason. In parts of the world where people are super religious and hold conservative beliefs, parents won't let their kids engage with Pokemon because it teaches evolution. There's a lot to unpack here, but we'd just like to point out that the evolution organisms go through in the real world and the evolution of Pokemon are two very different things. Most parents try to teach their children that cheating is bad, but there are some who have gone to extremes to get this concept across, especially when it comes to cheating in video games. In fact, one person even recounted online that they were not allowed to use the money cheat in The Sims video game. This cheat gave the gamer an infinite amount of money to build anything they wanted in their virtual house. The person's parents said it wasn't how the real world worked and therefore their child would not be cheating in the virtual world either. However, kids will be kids and they use the cheat code. When their parents saw all the new virtual goodies in their Sims house, they immediately grounded the kid and took away the game. Seems like an odd, over-the-top response to a simple cheat code in a video game, but strict parents will be strict parents. In some households, there are strict rules around watching TV. This single device can lead children to argue, learn about things they aren't supposed to, and even start all-out brawls between siblings. This is why some parents around the world have come up with some very unique ways to mitigate the television problem in their homes. However, a few of the rules around TV time are really weird. Some parents take the payment route. This can be in the form of poker chips with no actual value, or real money that must be cashed in to watch television. There is something strange about taking your kids' money in order for them to watch TV, but some parents believe so strongly in this rule that they will gladly take it even on a rainy weekend when there is nothing else to do. However, some of these weird pay-per-view rules might actually have some benefit. For example, some parents will offer to give their kids more chips or more money to watch TV by doing chores, or kids can even lose their television watching money by misbehaving or doing poorly in school. These incentives might also teach children the benefits of moderation and saving money. Perhaps more parents should be stricter about how much TV is watched or at least attach some type of monetary value to it. Other parents take a much stricter approach to screen time. There are times and even entire days that electronic devices cannot be used. This might seem like cruel and unusual punishment, but it was not so long ago that smartphones didn't exist. Also, it wasn't always a guarantee that parents could afford a television. So, the kids who were lucky enough to have access to them sometimes needed strict rules about how much they could watch. Imagine not being able to look at your phone, stream your favorite movie, or even watch the infographic show on YouTube because you had strict parents. This is the reality in some families on certain days of the week. It would seem that Sundays are the most common day for parents to deny access to any digital entertainment, and although this is becoming rarer, it might be worth trying every now and then. Some parents go overboard with grounding their kids for breaking their crazy rules, and you won't believe what some of these next people get punished for doing. Most parents allow their kids some sort of privacy, however some people had a strict no-closing-the-door policy on their parents' house while growing up. This could sometimes be taken to the extreme, as the only time their bedroom door would be closed was while someone was changing, and if it was shut any other time, the parents could break in like a SWAT team. One person recounted that they forgot to open the door after changing. Suddenly, their parents kicked in the door and started going through all their drawers and closet. Nothing was left unturned, and when the parents didn't find anything out of the ordinary, the person was still grounded for closing the door when they weren't supposed to. This is obviously an extreme example of a search and seizure by strict parents, but one that's not as uncommon as you might think. Bedroom doors have been used by all sorts of crazy parents who go overboard with their rules. Many people have told stories of lists of rules being nailed to their bedroom doors, just like Martin Luther nailed his 95 theses to church doors. There's something to be said about a strict set of rules every day when you wake up. This type of psychological warfare strict parents use to enforce their rules is a little over the top. In some cultures, playing an instrument is taken very seriously. But in certain families, a child playing the piano can be so important to the parents that they invent a bunch of crazy rules around it. Many kids have parents who require them to practice their instrument each day to become proficient. Some parents will let this slide from time to time, but not all. 
Strict parents have implemented crazy rules, such as for every hour of playing with friends their kid has to practice the piano for an hour. Imagine what that would look like. A child would come home from school and be exhausted from spending seven hours in a building learning about different subjects, one of which might have even been music. The last thing they'd want to do is sit down at a piano and practice for hours. However, in order to spend any time playing with their friends, they would need to practice their instrument first. Just thinking about the practice-to-fun ratio involved with this rule is stressful. Although, depending on the child, parents might take an even weirder approach to grounding their offspring. Some parents actually ground their children so they'll spend more time outside of the house. This might seem counterintuitive until you realize what type of kids we're talking about. For example, some children lock themselves in their room to read endlessly or play video games nonstop for hours or even days at a time. This has led to some parents creating rules which force their kids to go outside and spend time with other people in the real world. So, it would appear certain strict rules aren't just for keeping children inside the house but to get them out. And if that wasn't weird enough, some parents have a color coding system to keep track of their own kids. To be fair, the color coding system implemented by some households is put in place to try and reduce the amount of fighting between siblings, but this doesn't always work. For example, if your parents assigned you the color green, you would just have a green toothbrush, a green towel, green cups, green bowls, and all your toys would be stored in a green bin. Your brothers and sisters might have other colors, which you would not be allowed to touch. Seems like a good way to stay organized, but in some cases if the color code was broken, there would be consequences. However, people who grew up this way have said that the strict color rule implemented by their parents helped them become more organized. So maybe there's something to having a specific color and sticking to it as a child. In some households, there are rooms that are off limits. This varies by family, but in at least one instance a person's grandma had an absurd rule about one of the most important rooms in the house. Everyone needs to use the bathroom, and there were two in this house in particular. However, one was off limits, according to Grandma. Anyone could use the first bathroom, but there was hell to pay if you ever stepped foot in Grandma's bathroom. The consequence for breaking the rule was that you would be dead to her. She would literally ban her own family from her house and refuse to speak to them ever again if they entered her bathroom. According to one of the family members, a cousin and their kids, which would be Grandma's great-grandchildren, were all banned from the house because her husband used the bathroom without any knowledge of the rule. The crazy thing was that Grandma refused to forgive the entire family even though no one told the husband, now ex-husband, about the rules of the bathroom. It is unclear if the divorce occurred as a direct result of the craziness of the Grandma's rules, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. In some cases, parents can be completely obsessed with the material things in their homes and this can lead to some bizarre rules. For instance, there are people who refuse to let their kids or visitors walk on carpets in their home. Instead, strips of plastic or cardboard are used to create a winding path through the house. Everyone must remain on the pathways at all times. Friends that came to visit the house were required to wear special slippers or use the ones that were provided to guests by the parents. There's nothing wrong with wanting to protect nice furniture in a house, but this rule seems a little extreme, especially since even dogs were expected to remain on the walking paths. This crazy strict rule was literally for everyone. Must have been more like visiting a museum than a friend's house when going over for playdates. Now watch Insane Rules Bounty Hunters Have to Follow, or check out what rules do former presidents have to follow.